Okay, hi everyone. So I've been getting a lot of questions about, hey, what was it like for your experience setting up AI and success factors and what are some of the issues you ran into? So look, I'm not gonna go into the technical configuration of like IAS and actually doing the technical connection, but there are a couple things within the success factors instance that I kind of ran into. So now I have this all set up, right? I, I have my jewel and I've created videos on this. I also have the Gen AI in here where you can generate insights and, you know, I've created videos on some of this functionality as well, right? This one is the compensation insights. And so um, once you have it, it all connected, there are a few things that you have to do within in success factors. And so you can see, you know, all of this is kind of working. It has the data sources, which is cool. Um, but the main place for this is really just once the connection's working, a lot of the work is just turning on the functionality that you want. And so for some use cases, you know, there is an additional cost and I think that's outlined in a document. But for me, like if I wanted assistant writing turned on, you just turn it on, right? And so um, some of these have their own permissions or authorizations that you have to work with. But I guess one of the things you have to realize is this AI services administration has its own authorization. So to even access this, you have to have the permission role for this page. And so um, I, for me, when I, I set this up, I came to the role-based permissions. I set this up for my system admin, which makes sense here, right? Not everyone should have access to that. And the way this works is, you know, you have user permissions, this section here, but then you have administrator permissions. And so if I scroll to the bottom here, I actually have a section for AI capabilities. And there's two items here. The one I just showed for AI services administration, and then another one for document grounding. So I think there's two, currently two use cases at the time of this video that SuccessFactors has that uses document grounding. It's the ask HR policies, and it's the uh, explain my pay functionality. However, one of the issues I ran into is when I first did this and I bought the premium AI and I had this all in here, this manage AI capabilities was not here. And so one of the things that I had to do after troubleshooting and looking into it is we had to do an RBP refresh, right? And so, you know, there's some SAP help documentation that, that kind of uh, explains this. And so once I did that, I did the refresh of the role-based permissions and then now this was here i was able to assign this to uh, my user and now i had access to the ai services uh, administration and then i could go on and, and you know turn on functionality i wanted right explain my pay statement for employee central uh, payroll i did have to work with sap to um, get uh, this available in my system. So I think it's just uh, something that they turn on and once it's here, then you can activate it. However, like I said, for this uh, feature, as well as the Ask HR policies, it does require the document grounding. Um, and so what this requires is going to a place in here and you can see the AI use case. These, these are the two right here, explain uh, my pay and uh, ask HR policies. So this requires a connection to a SharePoint site. So tag documents in SAP SuccessFactors AI. So I actually have a SharePoint that I connected to the this that I had to set up. One of the things when I was setting this up, it does ask you for like a SharePoint site ID, client ID, folder path that you want to save the documents to, and then like a, uh, I think it's the client secret and a, a tenant ID. And so one of the issues I had was when I first got the SharePoint ID for my, my uh, uh, SharePoint admins, uh, it, success factors just didn't accept it. And so then I did some research, really looked into it, and then um, I found this Graph Explorer site where you can enter in the URL and then it would return the ID for um, your specific SharePoint site. Because I, my understanding from talking to them is that this needs like a composite ID and maybe not the one that you, you would think. So that was kind of the other um, item that we ran into. Uh, but after that, now, as you saw from the beginning of this video and some of my other ones, now we have this all set up and, you know, Jewel kind of works here. And so, um, yeah, um, once you get it working, a lot of the cool thing with this is that a lot of the functionality um, kind of just starts working. So you don't have to set up anything for like the time off use cases or entering time or uh, navigating. If, if everything's kind of connected, then those use cases kind of just work out the box. So.
yeah, check those things out. All right, appreciate you taking time. Let me know what uh, other videos you'd like to see and go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the videos. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks.